Russian tank losses are still on the rise, especially due to Russia's current costly offensive in a suburb north of Donetsk. Here, we've seen numerous videos and images of huge numbers of Russian vehicles being lost. From Oryx's numbers, over the past year, Russia has been losing almost 2.5 tanks on average per day. But since October 1st, that rate has almost doubled to 4.9 per day. So, with this in mind, let's take another look at how many tanks they have left in storage and their ability to keep replacing losses, and all using the most current satellite imagery. But first, real fast this week, our sponsor, making this all possible, HelloFresh. Have you ever struggled with the question of what to do for dinner time? Running out of ideas? Well, HelloFresh has over 40 meals to choose from per week, and they're all delivered directly to your door. Picky eaters in the family? HelloFresh has something for everyone with a wide range of cuisines to fit anyone's legs. Not a fan of the hassle of grocery shopping? Again, HelloFresh sends pre-proportioned meals delivered directly to your doorstep, so no need to head to the grocery store at all. And personally, I know that all three of those apply to my family. So HelloFresh is really making mealtime decisions easy. But I can honestly say that after years of using HelloFresh myself, I've always been able to find several meals that cater to the whole family. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use my code P-O-G-C-O-V-E-R-T-O-C-T-16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Offer is for new subscriptions only. Varies by plan across nine boxes. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Again, HelloFresh. Again, I want to give credit to HiMars for massively contributing to this video. Make sure to check out his Twitter account where he'll be posting some more details and satellite imagery that we acquired for this project. But I'll skip the typical introductions and background information and get right into it. The only thing I'll mention is to make sure to watch till the end if you want more details on things like how many tanks might be in garages and other possible errors such as potential decoys. That and more will be explained in detail. First up, the 22nd in Bai, Russia. This one saw yet another big drop. In 2022, it had 700 good tanks. In February 2023, 575. And now in this image from July, just 450. But again, there are many garages they could be in. However, the steady rate of decline shows that it's definitely dropping. One thing notable here is that they're finally starting to use this large group of T-80U variants that have been sitting virtually untouched for over 12 years. And also, this was the oldest image in the bunch that we have here, being from July. But we were fortunate enough for all the other bases to get imagery from within the last 45 days. This one is the only exception. I had a satellite task to try to take a picture, but it never got a clear one in time. So the next is the 103rd. This base has stayed pretty much exactly the same in the number of good tanks. I had 380 in April, now about 400. But that could just come down to the difference in trying to distinguish between what is, quote, a good and a bad tank. And interestingly, the number of bad tanks dropped significantly, from about 500 in April to about 310 in October. Also interesting is that in the southeast of the base, where historically tanks have been scrapped, here now everything is much more organized than in the past. One possible explanation that HIMARS came up with is that they could be conducting a more systematic approach to salvage for spare parts for use in other tanks. The 111th has dropped substantially, from 640 down to just 430 good tanks, and it's readily apparent in the satellite imagery. Some other sites, there might just be a few less tanks here or there in each group, but overall, over many groups, they add up. But here, you can see entire sections just gone. And this base is mostly older T-55s and T-62 tanks, so it seems Russia is continuing to pull more and more of these older ones from storage. The 769th, or 227th that I previously called it before its name was changed, actually increased from 630 to 700 good tanks. But that base is also mixed in with the 5th Guards tank brigade, so it could just be a difference in how we counted them. The 349th has always been a difficult one to count. I've never been able to get higher resolution imagery of it, and even Google Maps doesn't have any recently. The only very high resolution one here is from almost 5 years ago. In it, you can clearly see the massive number of tanks this base had but it's also dropped from 450 down to just 390 as of the 2nd of October, 2023. However, this base still has a large number of bad tanks that are almost certainly only good for spare parts, if anything at all. The 1295th has become virtually empty of tanks, from roughly 90 back in February to just 55 as of the 12th of October. The tanks here though, again, are mostly older T-55s and 62s, but in pictures we found for the research for this video, even those few remaining are in questionable condition. Then finally, it's also worth noting the numerous garages tanks could be inside, and again, I'm going to address that later on. 
The 1311th has been a base I've noticed that's always been extremely active with vehicles constantly moving around, but the number of tanks here has actually increased significantly, from 400 to 550. Almost all of that though comes from the previously empty field and additional tanks now seen in front of garages. So again, we run into the question of tanks stored inside these garages. And then finally, the 2544. This one's another one that I've always disliked counting, again due to the always lower resolution imagery. But thankfully, Heimars was a huge help here. It's also declined, from 420 to just 300 as of the 3rd of October this year. This one is slightly harder to see the decline though without counting since they're more spread out and scattered across the base. And then finally, there are a few other real small bases that weren't worth buying satellite imagery of. But those in total were about 250 total tanks, so slightly less than before. So, this all gives us a grand total of 3,525 good tanks left in storage, and 5,450 if we also count all the bad tanks. But the vast majority of those bad tanks are obviously completely gutted and cannot be saved. So that makes a decline of almost 400 tanks from April 2023, and a drop of nearly 1,200 from a year ago. Also, there's probably an even bigger drop since the latest imagery from the 22nd is from early July. And just between that and late February from the image that I used last time, it's declined by 125. So it's likely to have declined further in the four months since, possibly by another 100 or more. But this total decline pretty much matches up with Oryx's reported losses. There's a GitHub page that automatically notes and graphs Oryx numbers each day, and it showed there's a pretty constant average loss rate since November 2022. That rate is about 75 tanks per month. Our numbers here are about 57 tanks per month on average since March. But then if you also add in that Russia might be building two dozen or so new tanks a month, those numbers match up almost perfectly, implying that Russia has been able to keep up on replacing tanks they've lost in Ukraine. And then finally, since I broke them down by type last time, I decided to struggle and try to figure out the number of good tanks by type again. This obviously has a higher error rate. The biggest drops by far were surprisingly from the oldest types, again T-55s and T-62s. A likely explanation might be the sudden need to get more tanks into service as quick as possible. And this could actually answer a question that I often get asked. If Russia has so many newer T-80s and T-72s in storage, then why do we see them bringing ancient T-55s and T-62s into Ukraine to fight? One answer is likely because they are so much easier to repair. In general, older tanks are less complex than newer ones. Newer tanks typically require more sophisticated electronics, optics, communication equipment, engines, transmissions, suspensions, armor, and weaponry. Also, since they are still making massive overhauls and upgrades to existing stocks of T-72s and T-80s, and making them virtually into a whole new modern tank, for Russia it might be more worth waiting till they can fully upgrade those instead of just wasting them with minor improvements to quickly get them into combat. And then in the meantime, to quickly get more tanks into service, they're taking older tanks, basically just getting them running and putting a little extra armor on it and shipping it out. And that fits with what we're seeing. The T-55s and 62s we see are not major overhauled and upgraded tanks, but instead with relatively minor improvements. Also, there's a possibility that since Russia has been overhauling and upgrading T-72s and T-80s from storage for years now, they might have been taking the ones in the best shape and the easiest to upgrade first, and therefore the ones that are left might be in much worse shape. Next, it's also important to note potential problems and possible errors in our number. First, it's incredibly hard to count these tanks. I mean, just look at this one section we struggled with a bit. Can you tell how many tanks are there? The lower resolution, the trees, buildings, and their shadows all make it incredibly difficult. Luckily though, most are easier to count, like here at the same base. The lower resolution might have also made us slightly overcount by accidentally including things like engineering vehicles. These often just use tank hulls and they replace a turret with a crane or other equipment, so they look kind of identical in lower resolution imagery. Also, again those numerous garages that could hold tanks. Most sites do not have these garages, but there are about 50 total at these bases that are dedicated for tanks that do not already have their vehicles parked out in front of them. Each is typically 18 across and 2 deep for 36 tanks total. That means, at very most, there could be another 1,800 tanks not visible. However, many are in really bad condition and most show no signs of use in years. Also, tanks stored inside are typically in better condition, so they would have likely been the first to be pulled from storage and used. So, my best estimate is maybe around 500 maximum, with likely less than 200 total actually parked inside. But that, again, is obviously a big question mark. 
then there's always the possibility that some of these might be decoy inflatable tanks. Russia has been known to use these in the past, like here at Zapod 2021, and also in Ukraine as well. And we've also seen them paint giant fake Tu-95 bombers at airbases in Russia. Even though it's clearly obviously a fake compared to the real one next to it, it does show at least some attempt to deceive people who are trying to look at the base in satellite imagery. However, it seems unlikely that many, or even any at all of these tanks that we've counted are inflatable decoys. While the decoys have become incredibly realistic, even with small heaters to give off heat signatures as if the engine was running, and things like radar reflectors to show up on radar, any close-up inspection will reveal it to be a fake. And Yandex has some good aerial images of some of these sites. Even Google Street View has some as well you can go see. There are also plenty of images online of these bases from personnel who work there. Also, at least with inflatable decoys, they're not really designed to be used long term. They're more for short term on the battlefield to try to deceive your enemy. And it's also likely that if they were faked, someone would have leaked images of them by now. So the odds of massive numbers of these tanks being fake is extremely low. So, the big question is, when will they run out? Beyond what they just have in storage, one of the most important things to determine this is how many new ones they can produce. Russia doesn't release these numbers, for obvious reasons. They'll occasionally state that a new batch of tanks were delivered, but often not the exact amount, or whether those tanks were brand new tanks or overhauled ones from storage. So, since we don't know, the best we can do is estimate based on various clues. A Russian Telegram account here states that Russia produced about 100 tanks per year on average before the war. They then state that, since UVZ has picked up the pace due to the war, they can now produce about 200 to 250 a year. That's as long as they have all the parts, electronics, optics, etc. that they need. So, given Oryx's number of tank losses, which average about 4 per day over the whole war, even building 250 a year means that Russia has a deficit of more than 1,200 tanks per year. That article though is from almost exactly one year ago now, but new tank production likely cannot be increased too much further since currently only UVZ can produce them. The article also states they can upgrade about 600 tanks from storage a year, such as overhauling and upgrading an old T-72B to a T-72B3. But those two figures combined still leave a huge shortfall. The way they make up this difference again might, again, explain why we are seeing a huge drop of older tanks. That is, taking T-55s and T-62s, which really don't need extensive upgrades, just doing some minor work and quickly sending them into Ukraine. This lighter work can be done at many other factories across Russia. And that also leads me into another question I often see. Some people point out different areas where numerous tanks are seen all parked in the open, and saying that I missed those. All these locations that people have sent me are what are called tank repair plants, or factories. The reason I do not count these in my total number is because these are tanks that have already been pulled from storage and waiting to be repaired or overhauled to be made active. So that about sums it all up. Thanks for watching.